Welcome to Iron Sharpens Iron Men's Group. Uh, Proverbs 27 17 is iron sharpens iron, so one friend sharpens another. God bless you. Welcome. The same old thing. Got to meet uh, from here. I'm looking into a camera here instead of uh, face to face, but by the grace of God, at least we can do this. Uh, miss you guys. Uh, still praying. Sooner or later, we're going to get back together. Um, you know, the Lord's placed a couple things on my heart. Um, and one of them is, uh, I think a lot of us are paying more attention to the news than we are to God. And the thing about the news, uh, uh, the news can spread fear, you know, but God, God is a God of, of comfort and uh, peace. So uh, he put that on my heart. Hey, but what I want to talk about today is um, um, the other week, Allie had give her testimony and message, and uh, it got me to thinking, it actually got me to thinking about um, uh, before I became a Christian and all. Um, and she talked about how God pursued us. And I mean, how awesome is that? You know, and it made me think about um, how I was lost you know, and, and lonely, and man, made bad mistakes, bad decisions, bad choices, and, and um, how many more are out there like that? And um, so anyway, one of the scriptures and all that she shared um, was in the book of Luke uh, in the 15th chapter. And it talks about how a, a shepherd had a uh, hundred sheep, okay? And, um, and he's out there and he realizes, you know, one of them is gone. And so he's like, I got to go find them. You know, it's like, man, he had 99, you know, he had 99%. But yet that one was gone, you know. And, and so uh, he goes looking for him, you know, and he looked and he looked and he looked until he found him, you know. And when he found him, you know, they were all just happy. It just He's just so joyful, you know, and then when he goes home, he tells everybody at the house, right? And, and everybody is just, just so cheerful and so joyful because that one was found. Um, that's the way it is in heaven. When, uh, when one of us, you know, may be lost or have been lost, you know, that, that uh, in heaven, when we finally make that decision, you know, and to, uh, to repent and, and allow Christ to come into our life, uh, says all heaven rejoices. Man, praise God, you know. Um, you know, and then another verse, uh, it's, it's along the same time. What is happening at this time, Jesus is sitting around the, uh, and talking to a bunch of people and they're a bunch of tax collectors and sinners. And, I mean, isn't that something, you know, they put tax collectors in there with sinners, wow. Um, and the religious guys are kind of walking around there and says, you know, what is he doing? Uh, eating and, and, and sitting and uh, talking to all these sinners and all, you know, and, um, you know, Jesus heard that. So he started sharing these stories, you know, again, about the lost sheep. And, and um, another one is about the prodigal son um, or the lost son. And um, that, that, again, that's in uh, chapter 15. And what it is, it, this, this uh, father, he has two sons and, uh, and the youngest one, you know, he's ready to go out in his eyes. He's just ready to get from out of his father's uh, sight, so to speak. And he says, Dad, give him my inheritance, you know. And, uh, you know, the dad loves his son, you know. So he divided up the inheritance between him and his brother. So the young guy, he goes out and, and he uh, just goes partying. And um, as some people say, uh, uh, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, you know. And... So he goes out and then he loses everything, just loses it all. A famine that comes across the, the country and, and all of a sudden, you know, people are starving, they're hungry and he has nothing, right? And so he takes on this a job, I mean, one of the lowliest jobs back in that day was uh, watching over swine, hogs, pigs and uh, so he's you know taking care of them and he's feeding them and he's looking at the food and it's like, man, you know, I, I'd like to eat that, you know, I, at least I'd have a full belly, right? So it made him start thinking, what's he doing? What am I doing? You know, 
my father's servants, that they're, they're, they're eating. They have more than enough. They have stuff left over, you know, and here I am and I'm hungry. And so I'm going to start reading now from, uh, again, chapter 15, verse 17. It says, but when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare? And I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer, longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he's losing his pride, dropping his pride right now. Pride's a tough thing for men. And he arose and came to his father. But he, when he was still off a great ways off, his father saw him and had compassion, praise God, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And his son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fattened calf here and kill it. And let us even be merry. For this my son was dead and he is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. And again, that it just reminded me of how God just, um, he pursues us. He chases after us. Uh, God's love is patient and he searches for us and he gives us all these opportunities to, uh, to make the right decision. Um, but he doesn't force us. But like the father uh, in the story, he waits patiently for us. And when we do make that right decision, man, he is so joyful. And he, he just loves on us and, they, and again, they rejoice. Uh, God's love reaches out. And when he finds the sinners, no matter what we've done or how we've got lost, it doesn't matter. He reaches out and he touches us. And that is one of the reasons, you know, one of the main reasons are uh, the love that Jesus and Lord had for us, that why Jesus came here to earth, that he can search for us, find us and save us. It's pretty awesome. As I said before, pride is, uh, can be tough for a man. Don't let pride keep you from having a peaceful life. Don't have, let pride keep you from um, inheriting the kingdom of God. Um, don't let pride keep you from your family joining together. Be able to humble yourself and, and say, I'm sorry. Great day, I'm sorry. That didn't hurt, <laughs> it really didn't, you know? Um, even though that's not them two words, I'm sorry. You know, to a lot of people, they're big, they can't be said. And so I say in Jesus' name, stop thinking that away. Them two words can be all the difference in the world for you or someone else to be healed when you say, I'm sorry, and forgive. You know, think about it. We were all at some point, more than likely, a lost sheep or a lost son. God forgave us. We need to forgive. Let's pray. Lord God, just love you and praise you, and I thank you. I thank you for loving us so much that you sent your son here to um, to die for our sins, that if we believe in him, that we should not perish, but we shall inherit your kingdom. Lord God, I ask you right now that those that are looking here, that Lord, that um, may have some unsettledness in their life, and, um, need help, but Lord, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, just bind the spirit of pride. 
And Lord, we loose your joy and your healing in their life, your humbleness within their life, that in Jesus' name, that they humble themselves and ask you for help. Lord God, we just lift them to you now and pray healing over whatever situation it may be. Strengthen them in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you. Next week, we're going to have our guest speaker. His name is uh, Corey Morgan. <sighs> Corey's a great guy. Little young man on fire for the Lord. And um, so, my, uh, blessed roll call. Come on, if you see this, type in there, type the blessing, okay? My blessing roll call is, uh, is Corey. He told me uh, something about his, his daughters and how she is just growing in the Lord. And it was a blessing that she is an example to those around her. Corey, you're doing a great job. You're my blessing. Amen.